So, if you accept my alternate explanation and there's no theory requiring new dimensions, how would this possibly fit into our existing electromagnetic framework? I'll show you. Review. I'm sure you've all seen this all before. This is a frequency uh, distribution of an instrument, in this case an oboe. The way we know it's an oboe is because of the different values of the overtones, the different strengths of the overtones. All natural instruments have an overtone series. The particular layout over the overtones tells us whether it's a violin or a clarinet. Therefore, information is encoded in overtones, in spectra. All right, so here's how, if you have some of the waves, this is how they can add up. And you can see in this case, these two waves of different frequency cancel in some cases and add in other cases to create something that's quite different from the usual. This is a case of frequency modulation where you have a carrier wave, another lower value, lower amplitude modulating wave, and you superimpose that on that. This is a carrier, this is the modulation, that's how FM radio works. If you take a lot of frequencies and add them up, you'll eventually get a square wave, which is like that. And a square wave, you have to understand, is asking the electronic circuitry to go from zero to maximum value at the speed of light. So in order to do that, it has to generate a huge amount of overtones. So whenever we see discontinuities, we know that there's a huge amount of spectra and overtone generation. Any discontinuity will, will do that. Most of these examples come from Nature magazine, this being one of them. Rogue waves. Studies showed that rogue waves result from a specific combination of low frequency and high frequency waves in the ocean coming together at one certain time to the misfortune of some boats. And I suggest also giving it electromagnetism the ability to flip a bit in the box. I should mention that. You all know that for audio, if even though you listen at 2 watts, you generally get a 200 watt amplifier. That's because of these rogue waves that happen all the time in audio. Audiophiles are worried about that. They don't want this rogue wave to clip at 100 watts or 20 watts. That's why you get this overhead. That's for cleanliness, not for power. All right, we're going to look back to the workbench and try to find where and how these electromagnetic frequencies could have come from. So we're going to look at the circuitry itself. We're going to look at the ICs, and we're going to look at the internals of this multi-dimensional crystal radio. All right, we use crystals a lot. We just saw it as the basis of the oscillator. They're very precise. They have high quality. They have low resistance, so they tend to be very stable as oscillators. They can be predictably machined. If you start to look at integrated circuits or just devices, you start to get an idea if you juxtapose different materials in these combinations, you start to get different, all sorts of possibilities for diode creation. That is to say, nonlinearities. All right, and this really makes the point. This is a view of a substrate and built on a couple layers and so forth. And here's its interpretation in schematic form. You'll see here it's actually shown a bipolar transistor, which is the old type. And here's a MOSFET transistor, which is the new type and diodes, resistors, capacitors, they all exist on that substrate. So we have everything we need to make a radio. And if you pile that stuff here, whoa, we have lots of crystal radios. So the idea here is that you can think of an integrated circuit, or more generally, a digital array with wires into it, as a crystal ball. But it's a crystal ball that we now have the ability to make and get information into and out of via our technology. Just a review of how some of this stuff might come together. Wherever you have oscillators and diodes, you have the ability to make modulation and demodulation. Here's amplitude modulation, which is how our basic radio system works, combines from oscillators, diodes, don't need to go into it. Frequency modulation, I mentioned, you have a carrier, and as you apply increasing modulation, it takes more and more broader amounts of spectrum. The FCC confines FM stations to a certain range. This is really interesting. This is a dBBM. This is a full wave bridge rectifier circuit for a power supply. And it turns out to be the essence of a extremely complicated modulation system. When you wire them like this, you have some inductive components here, and you get a modulation spectrum which is very precise. 
and can be spread out and controlled in a way that FM can't be. This occurs in slots. FM occurs gradually. All right, so to sum up, I think what we have in these things is a multiband crystal radio. The unhooked pins give us lots of antennae. The geometry gives us lots of possibility for resonators. The uh, electronics give us all sorts of opportunities for modulation, demodulation, and yeah, it easily works with power off.